So, so we can do all kinds of things in this sort of formal mathematical kind of world. We can also kind of jump out into the, into the, the real world of sort of uh, uh, practical facts about the world. So let's say we are say, what's the GDP of France? Um, there's the result, there's a, a plot of uh, the history, and, and here's a, a few other things that we might immediately want to know about GDP, and we press more, we can get to more stuff. Uh, if we want to, we can kind of dress this up. We could say, what is the GDP of France, for example, question mark. Um, and uh, it'll go off and uh, be able to figure out that we're really asking the same question we, we asked before, give us the same answer. Let's maybe say we want to know what's the GDP of France divided by Italy, okay? So we as humans can pretty much tell what that question means, um, and so can it. And because all this data is kind of organized in such a way that it's computable, um, it can immediately work out, okay, it knows this value, it knows that value, it can divide them, it can get the result. We can say show the details, and it'll show us here the, um, uh, the result from that. Okay, or we could say something like, uh, I don't know, internet users in Europe, for instance. Um, and now there'll be a bunch of data that it has about that. Um, and uh, uh, it can, it'll go through and, and look up the data that it has and try and figure out a reasonable way to summarize that data. So it'll tell us the total number of internet users, the country with the highest number. It'll give us some histograms. And then it might give us a table down here of the various countries. We can ask it to show more of those. It's only and so 93 on. internet users in Vatican City. So it claims. I guess they have other sources. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we can go and uh, uh, we can go and ask. Um, let, let's say we pick a place. Let's try um, something like Lexington. Um, and uh, oh, I realize. Okay, so that this I'm I'm connected here through a VPN tunnel to um, uh, to a machine at our company headquarters in Illinois. So it thinks I'm in Illinois. If it had thought that I was in Massachusetts, which I am. Uh, it probably would have defaulted to, it should have defaulted to Lexington, Massachusetts. As it is, it just defaulted to Lexington, Illinois, and told me something about Lexington, Illinois. Let's go and tell it uh, we really want to talk about Lexington, Massachusetts here, because that's just down the, down the road from here. So it can tell us a certain amount about Lexington. It says, uh, you know, what the population is. It tells us that some, here are some nearby larger cities. It's telling us it's a, a very uh, uh, toasty 91 degrees in, in Lexington, Massachusetts right now. Um, let's go and uh, ask it. Let's let's ask it a little bit more detail about the um, uh, whoops the the weather in um, Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, so now it'll go and uh, figure that out, um, and it'll tell us. It'll give us a summary at the top. Here's the temperature and so on. Um, then it'll show us a plot of uh, that's the temperature as a function of time for the past week in Lexington, Massachusetts, and it's predicting. Uh, this is uh, from weather forecast. It will, it's predicting for the next few days that's how the temperature will vary with time. Maybe we can go and say, okay, show us the, uh, the last 10 years' worth of weather um, in Lexington, Massachusetts, and there's, uh, there's the result, and you can see that um, uh, it varies every, every year from warmer in the summer to colder in the winter, all those kinds of things. Um, we could, if we wanted to, we could kind of uh, dig in more precisely, and we could say, you know, whether on, um, uh, let's try something like this, you know, just some random date there. Um, it'll go and uh, hopefully be able to tell us on that particular day what the average temperature was. Um, there's, the, there's the pattern for the week around that day and so on. Uh, or we could uh, go ahead and say something like, um, let's say we say something like Lexington, Massachusetts, and then we just type in Moscow here. Um, and it'll, it'll probably, I don't know what, which I, I think it will pick by default the Moscow and Russia. Um, and now it'll show us things about a comparison between those two cities. It'll show us you know, how we get from one to the other, um, how far it is, um, those kinds of things. Um, we could go and uh, um, on the right, we can, uh, it'll give us a, a link to a Wikipedia page, for example, about Lexington, which we could go look at if we wanted kind of a, a more narrative discussion. This is, uh, Wolfram Alpha is really concentrating on giving us you know, just the facts about things. So maybe we can type in something like, uh, we'll give it some unit of measure, let's say you know, five miles per second, for example. And so um, uh, it's, um, uh, uh, we'll, it'll say, okay, there's five miles per second. What, what, uh, one thing it tries to do is to tell us something useful based on the input we gave. So uh, useful things it can tell us are things like, what are some other units that, that might be good to give that speed in? What are some comparisons for that speed that might be useful in terms of understanding roughly what it is? 
Uh, maybe we could try something else. Let's try 6,000 C, and uh, let's see what it thinks that is. Okay, so it says, assuming that C is a unit, and then assuming it means degrees centigrade, now it can tell us a sort of conversions for 6,000 degrees centigrade. It'll tell us some other useful things, like that's the black body spectrum at 6,000 degrees. That's the color that a black object would be if, if uh, heated to that temperature, um, those kinds of things. Or let's say we ask it, um, say, something like, I don't know, you know, $17 an hour. Um, we can uh, now it'll, it'll um, give us uh, uh, a result about that based on um, just giving us sort of convenient conversions um, for, that, uh, for that quantity. Or maybe we could type in something like, uh, you know, 4,000 words if we're writing some essay or something. Um, it'll tell us uh, um, here, are, here are some sort of typical things. We can, we can always drill down and say, show us more stuff here. Um, and uh, there's, there's the result for, for some other kinds of uh, quantities associated with 4,000 words. Or we could go and say, um, uh, I don't know, we could, we could start asking about materials, like, you know, let's say 333 grams of gold. Um, and it'll probably be able to figure out, um, uh, I have to say, I'm a little, little frustrated. It's running a little slower than I'm used to seeing it run. I don't know whether that's because of some, some strange uh, condition. But um, uh, anyway, I think when it's, um, when it's alive in the world, it'll be a tiny bit zippier than this. Um, the, uh, okay, so, so it's telling us um, about, uh, in this case, you know, some number of grams of gold, and it's telling us its value of it's about $10,000 by in, uh, current commodity prices, and here's the heat capacity of that amount of gold, um, all those kinds of things. Um, maybe we can go and, uh, let's say we're doing chemistry, we can say, you know, we could type in some chemical like, you know, uh, H2SO4, and now we could say something like, um, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's say we're making, you know, five molar <coughs> H2SO4. Um, it can then compute uh, what, um, uh, what you would need to, to make that, and it'll tell us uh, you know, how to prepare something like that. Or we could tell it, um, let's say we typed in something like, uh, well, it knows about lots of kinds of chemicals and so on, so let's say we type in caffeine. Okay, we can always go and, and actually compute things about this, so it'll know all kinds of stuff about caffeine, but we can say, you know, what's the caffeine molecular weight, or we could say, you know, caffeine molecular weight uh, divided by water, let's say, um, and it should just give us a result for that. Or we could go and say something like, um, oh, I don't know, we could uh, pick another material, like something like um, uh, decane, let's say. And now we can go and ask it, you know, what is decane? Okay, so there's some basic information about decane. Let's say, what's decane like at uh, two atmospheres and 50 degrees centigrade? Um, and now it'll have to uh, dive in and try and compute uh, from uh, um, information about that material. It can compute that's the position in the phase diagram, and here are some... Uh, uh, some particular properties of the material at that temperature and pressure, um, those kinds of things. Or let's, uh, let's pick another area. Let's, let's do something, let's say something medical. So let's say we go, you know, we say LDL 180. So, you know, that might be a result from some medical test that somebody's been reported. Um, and this will now kind of dive into some public health study. Um, and it'll say, uh, okay, if your LDL level is 180, that means that you're at the 95.9 percentile of the population. But now we could, we could kind of slice that a little bit more. We could say, you know, male age 40 or something. Um, and now it'll go and take that public health study and it'll go and slice down in the public health study and look specifically for the subpopulation that matches the, those criteria. And now it'll tell you, okay, so for that subpopulation, you're just at the 92nd percentile. Or maybe we could say, um, uh, let's say something like, uh, we want to know what's the LDL level versus uh, serum potassium level. And notice that the stuff I'm typing in is in kind of, uh, uh, I can type in sort of hopefully, um, type in kind of expert speak um, for, this, for this field. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't have to sort of spell everything out. Okay, so here it's giving us the comparison between uh, LDL levels, potassium levels. It's probably going to show us, well, there isn't a lot of correlation, it seems, there. But, but uh, it's showing us the, uh, the correlation that there might be between those two uh, medical tests. Or we could go and um, let's try something else. Let's try... Um, something like uh, life expectancy, uh, you know, male age 40 in Italy, let's say. Um, and we could go and, uh, now it'll go and uh, look at um, data on that, and it tries to tell us something that, um, it tries to sort of give us useful information based on what it can compute about that. So there's <coughs> distributions of survival curves and so on. 
there's a curve of the history of that life expectancy as a function of time, and that's probably some frozen history of probably a couple of wars there um, that cause it to, to go down.